love or hate them mobile communication gadgets have become a must have in our modern lives whether in making calls sending message checking on weather or traffic updates or even conducting cashless transactions our interaction with these devices have become so inevitable advances in internet connectivity are making it easier to perform some tasks using mobile apps not to be left lagging behind conservation fraternity are also embracing technology by availing very interactive mobile apps to involve the public in conservation and research ma kenya is one such app this app offers a platform to citizens to participate in monitoring mammal species across Kenya. In this show, we have an expert from the Mammalogy Section National Museums of Kenya who will tell us more about Ma Kenya app and mammal conservation in Kenya. Stick around as we explore our natural world in this episode, Nature Matters. Today, I am joined by Simon Musila from Mammalogy Section, National Museums of Kenya. Good morning, Simon. Good morning, uh, Richard. Thank welcome you. to the show. Thank uh, you so much for having me. Most welcome. Most of our viewers, they know about mammals, but very few knows about Ma Kenya app. What is the story behind Ma Kenya? Thank you so much, Richard. Um, for a very long, long time, Mammalogy Section, National Museums of Kenya, yes. and also the Mammal Committee, of Nature Kenya, we have been grappling about a way in which we can have a mobile-based application that can be used by general public to report on mammals. We did not succeed because we did not have the right tools to do this. But let me give you some um, information that has actually enabled, enabled, enabled us to do this. For example, currently we have more than 45 million Kenyans who are using mobile phones. And that number is actually increasing. Mm -hmm. um, out of that 45 million Kenyans, 90% of them, they are actually accessing internet through the mobile. So this has given us an opportunity which we, we feel that we can use to develop an application that can involve um, general public, everybody, in generating a lot of data that can be used in understanding about the distribution of mammals. So that is the essence, the, the idea behind the Mammal Atlas for Kenya, which is actually Ma Kenya. Nice. Yes. Uh, great, Simon. So why was Ma Kenya app developed? Thank you. Ma Kenya app was developed because uh, we felt that the general public, which actually comprises of the largest population in Kenya, mm -hmm. need to be involved in monitoring mammals. And so we it was developed mainly to bring in a lot of people to 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 to, to get involved in, in monitoring the other reason is that one the distribution of mammal species in kenya is not well known and because scientists are few they are not able to cover the entire kenya so if we bring in a lot of other people then we will have a lot of many people out there who would be contributing a science in science data mm -hmm. the other reason is that we we, we felt that we wanted to make the experience of going to the field or going to, to the world more enriching by contributing scientific data by the general public. Wow. Yes. So, who developed Ma Kenya app? Thank you so much. Um, Ma Kenya app has been developed by eight partners. This, uh, these eight partners, four of them are Kenyan partners and they include the Mammalogy Section, National Museums of Kenya. Uh -huh. Then we have the Mammal Committee of Nature Kenya. Wow. Then we have the Kenya, uh, Kenya, Kenya Professional Safari Guides Association. Uh -huh. Then we have the East African um, Primate Conservation Program. These are the, these are the national uh, uh, partners. Yes. Then we have the international ones. Uh -huh. We have San Diego Natural History Museum in the US. Uh -huh. We have the Fishburg uh, State University in the US. Oh. We have Kuming Institute, uh, uh, Kuming Institute of Zoology in uh -huh. China, yes. and uh, we have, of, of course, Spotron, 
the, the, the organization in Austria, which actually developed this Makenya app for us. Yes. Thank you. So, Simon, how will the data collected through Makenya be used to conserve mammals? Um, the data which will be collected by the Makenya will be used in various ways. One of them is first to know the distribution of species. Where are they found? Because the current data that we have is not complete. We know where mammals are, a few of them, but we don't know also where others are. So it will be very important to update on the existing data uh, so that we know where, um, where mammals are widely distributed. Two, we have tourists or tour planners, people who arrange for people to go to, out in the world. So this data, they can actually use them to know where the species are and uh, uh, arrange their itineraries very well. That is also. We can also use the, this data also to, for example, if we collect a lot of data for a long time, we can use is to model the distribution of the species by predict, predicting where species will be in the next maybe 50 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. We can also use it to know the status of the species, where they are in terms of the habitat condition mm -hmm. and even the species themselves. Oh. Thank you for the insightful uh, story about uh, Makenya. So, where can one get the Makenya app? Okay, thank you. Makenya app is an application that was launched in, in this year, in January 2021. So, it is uh, already online. All one has to do is just go to Google uh, Play Store and uh, actually download it from there. You go to Google Play Store, you type the name Makenya, mm -hmm. then you will see an icon with a lion head appear then you can just download it this application is very small and it, it can be used by people who are using android phone and even iphones mm -hmm. it's really available okay yeah great so simon who can use makenya app okay the mammal atlas uh, application makenya can be used by everyone who has actually a mobile phone a smartphone uh -huh. so then if you have a smartphone and actually you're also interested in conservation of mammals and we are encouraging people actually to be involved, to have a very good experience in the field, then pe people are welcome. Everybody is welcome to use it because the way it, it has been de developed, the language is very easy, it's very easy to understand, it's not complicated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's something everyone can, can actually get involved in. I'm great. Yeah. And uh, how many species are listed in the Makenya app? Okay, because at the, at the beginning or at the start we have decided that we, we, we loaded the, the application with 100 wild mammal species. I want to be specific, wild mammal species, not domestic, <laughs> not domestic. So, yeah. because we are interested in conserving wild mammals. Mm -hmm. So, these 100 species are the common species which are people find when they go out. They are actually even the largest species, species which they can easily identify. Yeah, so we have started like that because we know many people um, know and they can easily identify these uh, large species, but not the small ones. Yeah. After that, we'll add more species. But we, find, we, we, we realize that with 100 species, that is still a large number of, of species that they can help to report. Yes. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So, can I submit uh, mammal sightings uh, in and outside uh, protected areas using Makenya app? Definitely. This app uh, is developed so, such that you can uh, submit any record everywhere because we know that mammals are not restricted to either protected areas like national parks, reserves, and places like that where people go to do research. We know mammals are also found outside conservation areas. Even in urban areas like deep here in Nairobi Central Business District, you can actually find uh, some mammals. Or even in your house, if you have a small rat goes in there and you can be it's able really to identify it. Yeah, that's <laughs> a mammal and you can record it. So this application is for recording all types of mammals, wherever you can find them. So what should I do before using uh, my Kenya app? Okay, the first thing to do before you, you use the app is actually to download it. You go to your phone, you download the, 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 the app. Once you download it and you install it in your, in your mobile phone, then you, you just register your details. Like you can put your name because it's good people can know who you are. 
and what you are involved in. You can also put the, the affiliation, either you are affiliated to any, any institution. If you are not, there is no problem. Then you can also enter your details about your research interest. Once you have, you have done that, then you are good to go. You, you can start using the app and sending your records. Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, okay, what are the details that uh, are captured in this Makenya app, actually in my submissions? Okay, yeah. good question. When any time you, you see a mama in the world and you want to report it, um, the, the, the first thing that happens when you submit that record is that the date of that record is, 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 is captured automatically. You don't have to enter it, which is the day, the month, and the year. The second thing is you actually also have the, the name of the species. Out of the 100 species that we have installed in the, in the app, every species there has a common name and, and a, a scientific name. So you don't even have to type them yourself. Or you have to just to select the name and it will pop up and it will be installed. The other thing is the locality where you are doing the, the where you are where you are, you are doing your, your observation. You may enter it. It is an optional. It's an option to enter it, or you can even fail to option it, not to enter it, because next to that there is a GPS and location that will be also captured automatically. So if you if you record the, the locality, it's still fine, but the locality, the GPS of that locality will also be shown by, by when the data is captured. Mm -hmm. The other thing that is also captured in, data, in terms of data is the sex, whether the, the observation you have seen is male and female, but that one is not automatic. The observer, uh, Richard, like you, you have to, to, do, to select that. Mm -hmm. Then you also you have to record the selected habitat type where that species is found. Uh, it can be a forest, it can be a grassland, it can be an urban area, it can be a farmland. Then you can also uh, record the behavior. What was the animal doing when you saw it? What is running away? What is uh, was it feeding? Mm. Yes, you can also record the breeding, the breeding, the breeding status. Whether there were young ones there, mm -hmm. whether there are yeah, things like that, and, uh, and uh, you can even record the age, whether they are adults. Yeah, things like that. There's also an option to describe, to put more descriptions about what you have seen. Mm -hmm. So these are the details that are, that get. Associ associated with every entry that you submit. Oh, great, fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So, can I submit uh, big pictures as well as the species? Yeah, Richard, actually you can do that, and it's highly recommended if you're in the field and you see a species of mammals and you're able to capture it, a picture of it, that is highly encouraged, and together with the names. Sometimes, because you can see a mammal and it's, it's far away, using a mobile phone you cannot capture it, you you have only the option of now a name, which is quite important. But if you have uh, the option that you can capture the, the, the photo and even the name, that is good enough. Yeah, okay. so it is allowed. Uh, what if I go out to the field, I see a mammal and I cannot identify it? Can I still submit something? Sure, yes, you can. You can. Because as I said uh, previously, you can try to capture a picture of that species. And once you do that, and you submit it, you can actually even tell people that I'm not sure of the, the, the species name that I've, I've put it there. So can you help uh, me to identify it? And people who are using the app will actually help you. There's also an op option in the app which gives you a space where you can put in detailed description of the mammal species that you have seen. Even if you are not able to capture uh, a picture of it, you can, like, you can describe uh, the size of the animal, the, the features that you can see, where you saw it, and these are features that you can ask users of that application to also help you to identify that species. If they help you to identify and you get the right um, species name, you can actually go back to your record and edit and put the right name. Oh, yes. Great. So nice. it, so it's good to submit even if you you, do, you are not sure about the observation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. So, can I record? the same species if I visit the same area again? Definitely, Richard, you should do that because that kind of data mm -hmm. is very useful. If I go like to Nairobi National Park today yes. or this month and then I go each, each month for 12 months and I record a particular species 12 times, it means that species is very common there. Mm -hmm. If I go there 12 times, once every month and I only record it once, probably that species is rare. So it is important to record the, 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 the species again every time you visit because it will give us, us an idea about how 
common or abundant that species is in that particular habitat. So Simon, to what extent do you think technology is contributing to citizen science vis-a-vis -vis conservation? I think technology um, should be the new normal in terms of uh, in, in terms of, of this use in conservation. Why? Because if you look at the number of scientists who are involved like in the study of mammals in Kenya, Africa and even globally there are not many. When then you look at the conservation organizations that are involved in either creating an awareness or even conservation of these mammals, there are also few. Mm -hmm. When you look at the government representatives, there are also few. So that shows you that they, we need to bring in many people in, in conservation of mammals or even the environment. For you to do that, you need technology tools. And the technology, as we know it, has actually wired the world into a global village. In terms of, like we have transport, people have been moved all the time, They're very fast. And of course now we have the mobile applications, which everybody, many people are having them, and then they are also accessing the internet. So that, this has, has given us an advantage that we can use. I'll give you an example. In 2019, Kenya, we received 2 million tourists, people from abroad who visited Kenya. These people, definitely each of them had a, had a mobile, mobile phone. If you assume that like half of these people, one million uh, visitors went to a protected area because normally they come to Kenya to go to protected areas and to see what like. Yes. If these one million people, each of them had submitted one record of mammal observation, that we would be having one million records. That is huge data that we currently don't have. So the use of technology in mobile, uh, in citizen science, this is the future, and this is where we should go. Yeah. So the issue now, we, what we need to do is to create a more awareness about the use of this technology, develop more user-friendly applications, and actually even seek funding to build, uh, to continue to uh, improve on the use, the use of this kind of application. This is the future. This is where we should go. Interesting. Yeah. 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 Earlier on, you mentioned that uh, the Ma Kenya app is a project of uh, the Mammal Committee of Nature Kenya, the East African Natural History Society, and other partners. Uh, can you please tell us more about this committee? Okay. Yes, the Mammal Committee of Nature Kenya is just a group of people who have come together because they have one agenda, which is actually to conserve mammals in Kenya. They believe that mammals should survive in the environment forever because we, we found them there and they should live there forever because they play, they, they have different ecological values that they provide to the environment and even to us humans. So the members, everybody can be a member of this community, everybody who is interested on, on, on this. So members of in that committee believe also that there are things that people should not do too to harm the environment, especially like hunting of wildlife, mm -hmm. illegal hunting of wildlife, this should not be done. And even now, destruction of the environment. So people of all walks of life are invited if they have the same interest to join this committee. Uh, that sounds very interesting. So what does uh, this committee do? Okay. The committee is involved in various things. One of them is just to like meet and talk. Uh -huh. Yeah, just discuss, <laughs> yeah, talking and talking, because uh, that way now, uh, new ideas can come through. Uh -huh. um, before COVID um, struck the world, yes. we used to meet um, physically mm -hmm. and share ideas about what we can do to conserve mammals. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that we were discussing. But now we have COVID, but uh, we normally have online meetings where we also discuss and share ideas. One of the products of this discussion, this talking like yes. that, <laughs> is uh, the actual the mammal app, uh, this Makenya. We have been talking about things like that for the last 13 years from 2008. Mm -hmm. And uh, now it is now something that has already been launched. So that talking has produced something. And we, we believe that we can continue talking and generating new ideas that can eventually be implemented. Mm -hmm. So the other thing the MAMO committee also is involved in is organizing scientific talks. We invite experts, people who study mammals, mm -hmm. either from either ecologists 
or even uh, people working with conservation organizations to come and talk to us, give us new information so that they can update our knowledge uh, in terms of what we know, and the new challenges, the new solutions that we can use to conserve mammals. So we organize this scientific uh, meeting uh, talks every, every, every month, mm -hmm. once every month. Uh, currently they are online. So, so check this space and they will be there, you can, you can join them. The other thing we also do is that we are, we are creating awareness about the need to conserve mammals. Specifically, we are targeting the youth because we believe they are young, their minds are fresh, and if you plant the idea that it's good to conserve the environment and mammals, probably at their adult stage, they can actually pick, up, pick this. Uh, we also uh, organize field visits, we go to the field to study mammals. Yeah, and while we are there, again, we also train people who are interested in knowing what kind of methods they can use to study mammals, different techniques that are used. Ah. Yeah, so that's the work of the committee. But many other ideas are coming, so we'll extend our, our, what we are doing. Ah, yes. Great work the committee is doing. Yeah. <laughs> it has been a great pleasure talking to you, Simon. But before we wind up, say I'm interested in learning more about uh, mammals. What am I supposed to do? Where do I go? Okay. One of the things you should do, uh, Richard, yes. is, and everybody else who is listening, is that they should first join the Mammal Committee. Because there is a place where you meet like-minded people who, whom you can share ideas with. And while you are also there, you can get new information by like the scientific talks I, I talked about, where we are interacting with, with scientists, people in actually involved in conservation, working with NGOs. So they, it's good to join the committee so that you can now build your knowledge from there. And actually um, also build us, because we expect that you can also be someone who can also contribute to the growth of the committee. So it's important to join the committee. Also, again, if you're interested more about uh, going deep, uh, studying mammals, like in academics, you want to, to do uh, some studies in the field, even for, for your thesis, like that, you can join the mammalogy section, National Museum. We have scientists there who are uh, working on different kinds of projects, studying mammals at different areas like diseases, ecology, human uh, mammals interactions, and things like that. And there you can actually be mentored um, to accomplish your, 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 your interest. You can join the, the, the mammalogy section as an, as an intern, research intern, as a volunteer, or even a research collaborator. So these are two places. If you join one of them, or both of them, then you'll actually be mentored and get to know more about mammalogy. Ah, oh, great. Yes. So about uh, the mammals committee, uh, if I want to join, whom should I contact, or how do I go about it? Okay. So for you to join the Mammal Committee, you can actually walk in into the Office of Nature Kenya, which is the, which is holding this the office of the, the committee. Um, you can walk in physically. It is located at the National Museums of, of, of Kenya. That's like the headquarters of Nature Kenya. You can walk into the membership office, uh, or office, or office. You can actually contact the membership officer there if you are able to come physically. But probably because of Corona, you may not be able to do that. So you can, be, you can actually make a call or you can even write an email. The details of these contacts are actually online. If you log in, if you go to Google and you search Nature Kenya, uh, you'll actually get to their website. From there now you can even get to the contacts and then you can get the email, you can get the numbers to call and you can, make, you can ask the membership or, uh, of officer and then they will direct you properly. And then you can join the committee or you join the Mammalogy Section National Museums of Kenya. So Simon, what is your take-home message that you're telling our viewers today? Okay, thank you so much, Richard. Um, my take-home message is that um, I'm trying to encourage people to use the Mamo Atlas, the Makenya. This is important because it is very easy to use. It is online, it can be downloaded, and actually you can go to the field and um, contribute observation. This is very, quite important because every data that you submit counts in conserving our Kenyan mammals. The other thing you can, I'm trying to um, also pass across is that um, when, when, when you register and use the app, please tell your friend about it, encourage them to use it because this is very important. Again, um, my, my, the, the last thing I'm saying is that 
please join the normal committee of nature kenya you'll benefit a lot you'll meet a lot of people whom you can you, you can grow with in terms of understanding mammals in kenya we hope you have learned one or two things about mammals and their conservation if you have enjoyed this episode please give us a like don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to get the latest notification of our uploads. See you next time.